is Nisreen's Art World. In this podcast, I will share my thoughts about different art firms such as films, books, paintings, performing art, etc. Hello, this is Nisreen. Welcome to the 12th episode of my podcast. It's lovely to speak to you again. Today's theme is Why Every Artist Should Read Tonio Kroger Tonio Kroger is a novella about the solitary life of a poet. It was written by the prestigious German writer Thomas Mann and was published in 1903. I first read the Japanese translation of this story at the age of 14. At the same age, the protagonist, Tonio, is in the first chapter. At an impressionable age, I was utterly absorbed by this story about a solitary guy. I even chose this book as a subject of my writing assignment at school. Maybe my enthusiasm showed. I received a small award for the essay. Reading the story again, this time in English, as a 35-year-old, I find the story as relatable as it was when I was a teenage girl in a small eastern Japanese town. I'd love to list three reasons why this story is very relevant today, especially for those who live with art, regardless of the form of that art. Reason 1. Depiction of loneliness. In my favourite podcast, Speaking of Psychology by the American Psychological Association, Professor Tui V. Gwen defines loneliness. She says, we feel loneliness when social experience in reality doesn't match our expectation. I believe that Tonio Kroger's first chapter captures this sense of loneliness. The first scene depicts Tonio Kroger's intense admiration for a friend, Hans Hansen. He is opposite to the arty, dreamy, quirky, dark-haired Tonio in every possible way. At least, Tonio believes so. Hans is blonde, blue-eyed, extremely handsome, sociable, sporty, wholesome, and adored by everybody, including our protagonist. However, this passionate friendship is not necessarily mutual. Tonio senses that their plan to take a walk together is not as big a deal for Hans as it is for him. This secretly breaks Tonio's heart. I think this type of disappointment in friendships will be very familiar to most people. However, what is unique about Tonio is his obsession with observing people like Hans from afar. For him, Hans is a symbol of beauty, simplicity, and virtue. He later declares he writes poems for people like Hans. Hans is a muse for Tonio. When Tonio grows into a young man, he also has a crush on a girl called Inge, who's blonde and cheerful like Hans. Some interpret these storylines as a sign of bisexuality in Tonio. I'm not sure though, because different times have different views of romances and friendships. What I can say for sure is that his self-marginalization and contradictory yearning for warmth and humanity are tightly intertwined with his creativity. And this happens to many artists today too. Reason 2. Complicity of Identities What prevents this introspective story from becoming the simple self-absorption of a wealthy man is a scene where Tonio chats with a good friend of his. Tonio is a successful poet in his early 40s at this point. The friend is a painter working on the canvas, Lizaveta Ivanovna. He pontificates about his ongoing creative block to her for pages. Lizaveta bluntly summarizes his conflicted state as a lost burger, which sounds right. She pointed out his concerns and interests are much more mundane than he thinks, especially for a guy from the upper middle class. 
I think this comment applies to many protagonists of great pieces of literature, such as Young Walther Sorrow or No Longer Human. But as far as I am aware, these pieces never have such dry perspectives about themselves, like Tony Koga. This social perspective adds sort of modern flavour to the novella. On the other hand, Tonyo's sense of being othered seems to come from his quote-unquote exotic mother from the South, Consuelo. Even his name, Tonyo, seems to be a peculiar name in his community. There is a scene where Hans calls his name strange, and he finds this hurtful. I think Mann's nuanced view, both about being an ethnic minority and in a privileged position in society, stands the test of time. Reason 3. Resolution to self-acceptance. In the last chapter, Tonio has a reunion with his past through an accidental encounter to his old friend. This leads him to go back to and embrace the root of his creativity. That is his love for the quote-unquote happy, lovely people. In his introspection, he is still alone and distant from the crowd as he was in the beginning. But I wouldn't call him lonely anymore because he doesn't feel the gap between his inner and outer walls anymore. Good or bad, he accepts the way he is. I will read a beautiful last passage written to Vizoveta. Quote, I admire those proud, cold beings who adventure upon the path of great and demonic beauty and despise mankind, but I do not envy them. For if anything is capable of making a poet, of a literary man, it is my bourgeois love of the human, the living and the usual. It is a source of all warmth, goodness and humour. I even almost think it is itself that love of which it stands written that one may speak with the tongue of men and of angels and yet having it not is a sounding wrath and tinkling symbols. The work I have so far done is nothing or not much as good as nothing. I will do better and live better. This is a promise. As I write, the sea whispers to me and I close my eyes. I am looking into a world unborn and formless that needs to be ordered and shaped. I see into a wheel of shadows of human figures who beckon to me to weave spells to redeem them, tragic and laughable figures, and some that are both together, and to these I am drawn. But my deepest and secretest love belongs to the blonde and blue-eyed, the fair and the living, the happy, lovely and commonplace. Do not chide this love, Elisabetta. It is good and fruitful. There's longing in it and a gentle envy, a touch of contempt and no little innocent bliss." Unquote. I feel the truth in these words. Whenever I am lost on my creative journey, I remember this passage and the bittersweet self-acceptance in it. So, if you are also an artist, ask yourself, what is a source of love and inspiration for your creativity? What did you think? I'd be delighted if you write a review of this podcast on Apple Podcasts or rating on Spotify. It would be lovely if you share this episode on social media as well. And of course, you are more than welcome to let me know your thoughts from the contact form in the description. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye for now.